I want to have something to do. That's what I want to do in my life. I want to wake up and feel like I want something I want to do and I want to do it. That's how I think, that's, that's how I would like to live. That's how I try to live. Um, so if I'm working, I'm not thinking about it. And that strikes me as a very happy existence. First of all, Boesgo was a workers' library, and then about five years ago, some people uh, start to go and to use the books that were on the library because the the worker the the workers' library was not uh, working anymore. Let's say <laughs> because it was a, an oldest library. We put together all the books and organize it by thematics. We start to organize, like for example, damages of the tourism, damages of the architecture. We also change the name of Boesg. It's It was already Boesg, but now it's like a library and observatory of the damages of the global society. It's not only to read books, but to read books having a critical uh, thinking about that books. That's why they are uh, the the books are organized for damages. Yeah, impressionists are too pretty. Right, you probably like those sweaty naked people in the next room. Lucian Ford, as a matter of fact, I do. You can't put that stuff in your home. You can't live with it. Well, I'm not interested in living with it. I'm interested in thinking about it. This section have as books. Uh, related to the no to the know how to how to how to make things, how to to build a table, for example. The do it yourself is important in a way that, uh, in a global society, uh, at the moment almost no one knows to do their stuff by themselves. Regular libraries, you go there, you pick a book, you read the book, but there. Not always there is uh, there isn't any discussion regarding that book, for example. The idea in here is if you go to the to Boesg, you pick that book and maybe even have a discussion about that book and uh, making a a, a critic to that book, for example. Uh, that's why we also organize uh, conversations about books and sometimes about books that we have in the library that we don't, that we think that are only a damage. <laughs> For example, uh... Well, what I try to do is actually think outside the box. <laughs> yes, uh, you would. What I like to do is to turn the box inside out, re-enter the box and begin thinking again. Some people connect Boesg as an anarchist library. Boesg, the, the, the people that belong to the Boesg do not say that it is an anarchist library. In spite of our aims, maybe are really close to the anarchist ideology, let's say. Anarchy the heart of the punk movement in the 70s and 80s, a driving force for civil wars and violent revolutions, a concept held in esteem by activists like Leo Tolstoy, Noam Chomsky, and Mahatma Gandhi. First of all, the, the library, the Boaz needs to be open more often, so it's, it's something that also uh, depends on, on us, on the people that, uh, uh, that are inside the the library. The, the library is open to everyone who, it, who is interested. Of course, yeah. the idea is, is if it's to people that go to the library, that uh, take part into the library, have uh, identifies with the project and with the aims of the library. If 
we talk about uh, countercultures, which is more or less against the stream and the status quo, um, they are they are a really natural and interesting way of like people to to make um, a stand about what they they think it's it's wrong with the, with the mass culture or the way they feel about it, and uh, if they are if they are necessary or not, it depends on the. Um, on the results they they actually get with these kind of subcultures or countercultures, because if if a subculture is um, doesn't have like any type of result or any type of uh, critic of or any type of uh, um, specific uh, change in the world, then I don't I don't see how like it's necessary to the. To, to make a stand against this mass culture. Черные рясы, золотые поклоны, все прихожане ползут на поклоны, призрак свободы на небеса. Клуба КББ, главный святой, бегом протестующих все снова конвой, кто нас идет, что не оскорбишь. I think that's that's. It's it's not the, the the purpose of a subculture because I think a subculture is just like uh, people with common interest in, interests joining and making stuff and like dressing in the same way or listening to the same kind of uh, kind of music or making the same stuff. But uh, I think even though it's not necessary, it gets interesting when it actually makes a difference and actually makes a uh, stand against something from the mainstream culture. In a lot of subcultures, the, 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 the main uh, subject that uh, it's uh, inherent in the in the subculture itself it maybe it's music which uh, sometimes brings to uh, some other factors like uh, um, fashion and uh, political stands Once again, it depends like on which critic the subculture is having on the society. If uh, like um, some subcultures that are actually against uh, this uh, consumerism and this capitalism society, capitalist society, and uh, they are um, clearly against it, and uh, that's why they exist to to question it and to make an alternative. Of course. It's it's completely uh, messed up when uh, when you see like the the, the this capitalist society uh, appropriating the subculture and turning into money, and um, and I think that, that that's that's a really natural thing to happen because like capitalism always did it. Subculture I know more about and the one I know the most is the punk hardcore sub hardcore punk subculture. And uh, yeah, I travel it's in a lot of countries in Europe, and I, I can realize that some are more uh, evolved or more um, developed than others in uh, uh, subculture-wise. Uh, but I guess like this has to do with the amount of people that are doing the same stuff and listening to the same music and doing the same political actions. Uh, if we talk about punk, uh, so maybe in places like Germany, in Spain, in Netherlands, there are much bigger um, counterculture groups than than in Portugal. Sometimes in some cities like Berlin, when it gets like thirty or forty percent of uh, of the, the young people in the city, you start to think about if it's a subculture a subculture at all, because it starts to get a bit. Mainstream and uh. Bonfire 
I read. That the greatness of America is the right to protest for right. There are some differences, but mm, not huge differences, like uh, from country to country. So maybe like punctual differences that you that then that you can only realize if you're part of the subculture itself. But they are not huge differences that you can actually uh, point. Maybe the, the, these differences like kept, keep changing like uh, as the years go by. Uh, sometimes there are more people in Portugal going to shows, and then like uh, two or three years after that, there are more people in Lisbon going to shows. Right now, uh, talking about punk shows and punk bands, there are not a lot of bands with young people starting in Lisbon, but there are some in Porto. But I remember that some years ago it was different. There was a lot of it was different. There was a lot of um, new bands in uh, in Lisbon. So um, yeah, I think these these places are necessary. We create this place because uh, we wanted a, a a free space where the non money driven uh, space. Uh, and uh, I think it's really necessary because. All the other places I know around here are, are like that. Even though we can't take money of the, equa uh, of the equation because we are paying rent and we are uh, selling stuff to pay that rent and to improve the place. I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, subculture exists because the society, uh, because we have like so something against the, the, the society and the mainstream culture. That's why we want to create a difference and alternative. But at the same time, uh, there's a lot of things to question even inside the subculture. So even if the subculture was mainstream, I guess there will be like another trends which maybe would be called subcultures as well. And uh, it just makes part of like a big uh, questioning your own self and questioning your own subculture and questioning your habits that is just constant and it's, in my opinion, can never stop. Like even when you reach some goals that you think are positive, you should always try to go forward and, and to do more. I'm really interested into a subgroup or maybe some subgroups, specifically the, the punk uh, counterculture. Maybe that means that I'm inside the, the subgroup because I do things inside them. I'm more interested like in trying to develop it and uh, trying to um, gather people with common interests to make stuff and to share ideas and to create stuff. Uh, once again, I think it's uh, a, natural, a natural thing that people do when they, when they, they want to, to be inside a group, be inside a, of, a, of a label that just connects some people with common interests. It's, I think the, it's natural from the human being to, to try to connect with people with, with uh, that, that like the same things or that dislike the same things. They came from the squats and suburbs of London and inspired a generation of ordinary young women to believe they could do whatever they wanted. Well, in, in Portugal is quite different from almost everywhere else in Europe, no, because uh, we have a much younger uh, do-it-yourself scene than any, almost any other European country, no? because uh, there was almost nothing here in the 80s, while in the rest of Europe 
things were growing and growing and boiling and things here, what started out there in 8081, it started here in 1991, it arrived 10 years later. Well, there's an important aspect that there's not many gaps between generations now, there's more uh, continuity. Okay. <laughs> uh, you see people in their late 40s, in their early 40s, in their late 30s, early 30s, late 20s, blah, 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 until teenagers. There's people of old generations. And here in Portugal, there was big gap. <laughs> When you tour and you travel, most of the times you don't get to know that well what happens now. It's, it re it's really up to what happens that night or those couple of days that you are staying in town. And But I lived in Barcelona for quite some time, and uh, for sure, it, it's the place I know besides uh, Portugal, and Lisbon, that I know better. And of course, it's a completely different history of what we have here. No, uh, that story of uh, generations and generations doing, uh, building something. No, that makes things uh, have a different strengths. I mean, when things are built step by step, year after year. Uh, but then I went for the first time in Barcelona in 2001 to play with one of the bands I had at, at, at the time. And it was like, wow, this is another, <laughs> another level, you know? Uh, the amount of people, the amount uh, uh, of places, of things happening. <laughs> Music gathers a lot of people in all cultures, being subcultures or, or not. But in subcultures, they have a lot of importance, uh, for sure. Of course, there are other factors. But usually, subcultures are not so different from the other cultures, no? It's a reflex of the society where you live, and uh, wherever you are, most people are on the surface of things, no? Then some go deeper, but most people are just passing by. I believe that's the main idea of punk rock is to be yourself and to be independent. So DIY is this, is do it yourself. Do not expect uh, anyone to come and do it for you or to have money from the state or to have sponsorships from whatever brands. Uh, uh, that's not What's interesting now, what's in interesting is to gather this group of people that are your friends, that uh, you share, you have common ideas and you want to do things. Not only, but a lot of it comes from that will to, to break the rules, uh, to rebel being, well, uh, when you're a teenager, uh, against your parents, against uh, school, against uh, all these things that you feel that uh, you cannot relate to that, you cannot live like that, no? Uh, I was a 14-year-old kid and uh, that grew up normally in a happy family, etc. No big, you know, problems that some people have, no? Uh, middle class, but inside I felt, I started to feel that uh, something was not right and uh, that this path I was uh, following no, um, wasn't really what I wanted for for my life but I had no idea what it was no but I started to feel attracted for uh, first for uh, these ideas uh, uh, I was studying this period in school no communism and anarchism etc uh, this period of history, I started to, to feel attracted by those ideas, 
then very quickly uh, that related with uh, punk rock music, no? Uh, I had fun doing it and it, it was worth it. I don't regret absolutely anything. <laughs>